Hello Striders, I am Bobgar, and welcome to episode 2 of the Magic Moment. The big event last weekend was GP Toronto. Congrats to Robert Lombardi with his Esperius Dragons list. He took first place, and kind of surprised people. The Esperius Dragons list is one that a lot of people didn't think was going to do that great in the current meta, but obviously it proved uh, a lot of people wrong, and it took down first, so congrats. And coming in second place, and fourth place, and eighth place, and 10 of the top 32 places was Green White Tokens. That's right, the deck that won the Pro Tour just a couple weeks ago was all over the place at GP Toronto. Though most people were just running the stock list from the uh, Pro Tour, there were a few unique additions. Uh, one of the top eight decks, for instance, alongside Nyssa and Gideon, was running some hot new tech in Chandra Flamecaller. Don't get me wrong, I think Nyssa is way more practical, but Chandra looks like so much more fun. The Star City Games Modern Open Milwaukee was also last weekend, and Asban Company was everywhere, taking the first, fourth, and fifth slot. Um, this deck is just proving to be dominant in Modern right now. The French. Sorry about that, I'm, I'm still haunted by nightmares of playing that deck a few weeks ago. But enough about the decks, so let's get into some spicy drama. Charles Porges was disqualified at 10-0 during the event. Supposedly, a lot of people think it's for this suspicious shuffle. Notice as he does this, the top card of his deck never moves. Um, obviously he does cut at the end and it looks like the, the card might move then, but other than that, it looks like it all stays pretty static. I think the moral of the story is just make sure you shuffle your cards well. And an even spicier drama, Chris Anderson got DQ'd for slamming his chair into a table. Not cool, dude. Next up, Mark Rosewater posted to his Tumblr about Eternal Reprints. Are they reprinting Path to Exile in Eldritch Moon? Or Inquisition of Kozilek? Serum Visions at Common! First off, I really do understand where uh, Marrow and R&D in general for Magic are coming from here. Uh, but as somebody who plays mostly Modern and Cube, this is really disheartening at the same time. I mean, not every card is going to be Thoughtseize. Uh, Thoughtseize, yeah, it's it's so powerful that it can warp metas. And probably the same is true with some of the other cards I listed there, especially things like Path to Exile. Um, I think Instant Speed Exile for, for one mana is a little bit crazy and over the top and has the potential just to be a... Uh, format dominating card. I think the weird thing to me is that they are printing modern staples that totally weren't standard. Just look at Collected Company. But I guess I see their point. R&D doesn't really want to relive their past mistakes. They want to make brand new mistakes! But at the end of the day, it sounds like the dream of them reprinting meaningful cards in standard is dead. Uh, we just gotta hope they come up with a way to reprint cards that don't run on a limited print run and don't cost $10 a pack. And that's it for this week's Magic Moment. Guys, let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions for stories to cover, if there are any things about this that you liked and didn't like. I'm still pretty new at this, so we're trying to figure things out. I will see you guys next week. Take it easy. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. You can find us on Twitter at MagicGathStrat, Facebook slash MagicGatheringStrat, or on the web, MagicGatheringStrat.com. There, you can find articles and free prize-supported leagues. This is all brought to you by our Patreons and CardHoarder.com. If you enjoy this content, please consider supporting us at Patreon.com slash MagicGatheringStrat.